Greetings, boys and girls, and welcome to another Wild Wednesday with Mr. Musselman. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about energy, specifically how humans generate electrical energy with some pretty cool different inventions that we've come up with over time. Now, before we get to in those inventions, we need to talk about the number one source of energy for us here on planet Earth. Think to yourself, what could that source of energy be? Wait for it. Were you thinking what I was thinking? Of course, it's the sun, our greatest source of energy. It produces light and heat energy, both of which we humans and all plants and animals on Earth need to survive. Without its light, the world would be a very, very dark place. And without its heat, the Earth's surface would be far too cold for us to live on. Now, when it comes to plants, plants use that light energy to transform water and carbon dioxide into their only, their food. What we think of as sugars that get locked up in the plant's body. And of course, almost all of our food right, starts from plants. So in many ways, that energy that the plant gets from the sun right, is the same energy that we end up eating and using when we consume plants for food. Almost all of the energy on Earth starts with the sun which is why it makes it so important and why we're starting with the sun today. Now, the sun has a lot to do with the inventions that uh, I'm about to share with you. Just as plants harness the sun's light energy to produce food and create its own energy, we can use the sun's heat as a way of producing our own electrical energy as well. Heat is always radiating or shining off of the sun. When heat energy is shining down on Earth, Earth is absorbing that heat energy and it's making some parts of the Earth warmer than others. When we heat up matter, it can cause matter like water and air to begin to move. When heat energy starts moving water or air, that motion creates a force, a force that you can feel. When we heat up a tea kettle like this one here, the air and water inside is starting to bubble and roil as you might be able to hear right now and pretty soon air is going to get pushed out of the tea kettle through this little hole right here but as you probably might have noticed there's some steam starting to come out right now and as the water begins to boil and boil and more uh, it takes up more space in the kettle some of that air starts to get pushed out and that push, that force, becomes stronger and stronger. And if we think about moving air like this on a much bigger scale in our Earth, we can think of that moving air as wind, which is an important source of electrical energy for humans. Let's show you how that happens next. As we can see here in this fun pulley system, The energy that I'm putting into this wheel is moving through this pulley to this fan where I'm creating moving air. In order for air to move, it needs energy, whether it's from my hand or the sun. Most of the energy we humans use comes in the form of electricity. Naturally, electricity is formed 
when we see events like lightning storms. But to generate electricity that humans can control takes some pretty crafty inventions, like this generator in front of us here. This is a model generator that was built for the Burlington Science Center by a Burlington citizen. I'd like to thank Dick Linder and his family for their lifelong support of the Burlington Science Center. Now, what we see here at the bottom is what shows us that electricity is being conducted or moving through the wires that we see wrapped all around this generator. Wires by themselves don't tell us that electricity is passing through them. It takes some sort of force to move these little itty bitty pieces of matter called electrons through those wires to conduct electrical energy. As we'll see, when I turn the fan here, electricity will begin to move through those wires and those light bulbs will light up. The faster that the fan moves, the more electricity will pass through those light bulbs and the brighter those light bulbs will shine. Just a little motion of the fan and you're hardly noticeable. But a strong turn, you can see those little light bulbs lighting up right there. This coil of wire is connected on both ends to this set of lights. What's moving the electrons through this generator right, is a special kind of material that you're all familiar with. Magnets. Take a look right here. We see in the middle of our generator a magnet. Magnets have two poles, a positive and a negative side. Magnets make a force able to move electrons. When magnets pass near ma materials like copper, which is the metal that these wires are made of here, right? And other magnetic materials like iron, the atoms in those materials will pass their electrons from one atom to the next. And this will create an electric current so let's put it all together, shall we? I'm going to be transferring energy from my hand all the way to these light bulbs. While we transfer that energy, it's going to transform into different kinds of energy. I'm going to start with motion energy. That motion energy here is going to transfer to the motion of this fan here, which is a bit like the big wings on a wind turbine. That motion is going to move to this magnet, which is going to cause electricity to start to move through those wires. And that electricity will transform into light energy down here. So with the sun, instead of our hand, we'd be getting free electrical energy from that incredible sun's power. Of course, not everything is free. You still have to build the wind generator, and you have to find a good place where the wind blows. And that's one of the big problems with wind energy, is that the wind is not always blowing, and we don't always want to build wind turbines or elect wind uh, energy generators uh, in places where the wind is blowing real strong. 